from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English. Winner of the 2017 Southern Oregon Television Award for Program of the Year and the Best Education Show, R Ramping Up Your English is an English educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. If you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and you want to reach higher levels of proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is animals. This is segment one of episode 72. In our previous episode, we featured a number of organizations that help wildlife. Now, many of those animals are birds. In preparing animal reports, we learned about different kinds of animals, like mammals, reptiles, invertebrates, amphibians, and fish. Let's take a closer look today at birds. Most birds are easy to observe because many of them are out during the day. Now, while humans can't fly without the help of our inventions, there's something about birds to which we can relate. Birds share one trait with humans and mammals. They are warm-blooded. Now, let's look at some of the other traits that birds have in common. From the flip chart page, we learn that birds have backbones, wings, and they lay eggs. Now, we see several examples of birds here. As we learned in the previous episode, not all birds can fly, but they all have wings. Birds definitely have backbones. Modern birds have beaks or bills instead of teeth, and their eggs can vary in size from that of a large ostrich egg to that of a small robin egg, or even smaller. Now this is about the size and color of a robin egg. In fact, there's a paint color named for this. It's called robin egg blue. Now sometimes a strong wind will cause an egg to end up on the ground, so it's not hard to find people who have seen robin eggs. Now this is actually not a robin egg. Although it's the right size and color, this is a piece of candy. So you can eat it like I'm doing right now. Now, like birds, you probably hear the crunching. Like birds, dinosaurs hatched from eggs when they were on Earth. Of course, reptiles also hatch from eggs, and the remains of dinosaurs seem to be more like reptiles than like modern birds. Most dinosaurs were huge, like this one. Now, working from this massive skeletal remains, scientists chose reptiles as the type of animals that were most likely to be like dinosaurs. But recently, a more careful examination of dinosaurs for the remains they've left show that the bones of many land-dwelling dinosaurs are more like those of birds than like reptiles. Some early types of feathers have also been discovered in dinosaur fossils. So relieved of the fear of giant, cold-blooded reptiles roaming the earth, I could relax knowing they actually had some bird-like traits. Then again, with all those teeth, maybe there would be something that would be very little reason to relax had we been around to share the planet back then. Well, all this clowning around besides, many scientists postulate that dinosaurs developed some of the traits that were later refined to evolve in today's birds. Strong, lighter bones are important in keeping weight to a minimum for flying birds. And the feathers are made of the same material as scales. So birds also emerged on Earth much later than reptiles. So they had a lot of time to evolve into the avian life we enjoy today. Now this bird seems to have missed too many meals. The skeleton reveals immediately that this is a vertebrate. Note the backbone. Right there. 
Birds have bones that are thin and hard, unlike the heavier bones of mammals and reptiles. Now, the advantage to flying is obvious, and also note the absence of teeth. Too heavy again. The beak, like the bone, is thin but strong. Every state, country, and continent has birds. The state of Louisiana is blessed with many species of birds. As we finish segment one of episode 72, let's watch a video about the birds of Louisiana. A bright white set of wings against the flat, expansive marsh of a wildlife refuge. That's not a rare sight in Louisiana. Louisiana license plates once proclaimed sportsman's paradise. Well, the state could be called bird's paradise or bird watcher's paradise. These flat marshlands are part of the Sabine Wildlife Refuge, a federal facility that protects wildlife and is accessible to all who want to glory in nature. And here, there's a lot in which to glory. This is a brown pelican, the Louisiana state bird. It appears on the state flag. It almost disappeared because of a chemical known as DDT. It slowly recovered after DDT was banned. Other birds like this one also were in danger. The great egret has survived that and being killed for the feather trade. That's illegal now thanks to government protection. The threat to these birds and to these white pelicans today is loss of habitat. And that's where the wildlife refuge system is so vital, providing habitat for great birds like these. Listen carefully and you'll hear this teeming flock. Birds like these don't spend the whole year in Louisiana. These migratory birds change locations, needing places like this refuge to rest and feed. The marsh has little to offer smaller birds like these. They need trees, not open marsh. It's not unusual to see such birds right out the window of your house, if your house is in Louisiana. This bird is a vulture, known here more as a buzzard. Vultures are not the most admired bird because they eat dead animals. Not always admired, but boy can they fly. These are snowy egrets. They're smaller than their great cousins, and this flock looked eager to eat whatever was here for them. Once this flock was finished, they all took off at once, flying to find another spot on the Acadiana Prairie. This migratory bird is easy to identify. This is a cardinal, a winter visitor to Louisiana. The female's color is more muted than the male's. These are often called LBJs, little brown jobbers, for those of us who are unskilled at bird identification. No great skill needed here. These are Canada geese. They fly in a V formation. These birds are often seen in Louisiana. They are blackbirds, a countless mob of them. Blackbirds in numbers like these can eat a lot of seeds, making them unpopular with farmers. My nephew and I saw this flock in the winter where they do no harm. Listen carefully and you can hear the sound of their collective wings.
separate cell of them over here, expanding and contracting. You, you hear you hear the noise there, yeah. all those wings are there? If all those birds make you uneasy, enjoy these shots of just a few birds in one place. Then there's this solitary fellow hunting for a meal. Let's see how it goes. Ooh, I thought she was going to take off. She got something. A mouse. I didn't think they ate mine. And ate it. And swallowed it with that long neck. In Louisiana, you often see white birds and black birds together. One of my favorite birds is the great blue heron. It has a caw that reminds me of dinosaurs. Another Louisiana favorite of mine is the red-tailed hawk. Listen for the high-pitched screech of this soaring hawk. Whenever I visit Louisiana in the winter, I always see geese. These are geese descending from the air, getting ready to land in a farmer's field. Geese spiral down as they land. Check out their great numbers. These geese come all the way from Canada, traveling over a thousand miles to escape the cold and to eat well. Well, so do I.